Good morning, everyone. Um, here's uh, the con we are again in the continuations of the lectures on quantum mechanics. And again, I'd like to uh, mention our main reference, Introduction to Quantum Mechanics by David J. Griffiths. And if uh, you can, please uh, buy this book. You can find a lot of uh, interesting stuff in that book. And most of the details in our lectures are found there. So we left uh, the lecture previously at a harmonic oscillator. So again, um, in classical mechanics, the harmonic oscillator is acted upon by a force, um, a restoring force negative. This um, force uh, is, um, is a very simple force. You have a product of a springs constant in the um, the position of the particle. And this is, of course, equal to um, m times the second order derivative of x with respect to time. And the solution here would just be very simple. And this is just the solution to the position where omega is equal to square root of, over, uh, of, of, square root of k over m. And the spring's constant divided by the mass of the particle. That's the omega. So then you can write your potential uh, of the harmonic oscillator. This, it's just equal to 1 half k x squared. The k here, so you can actually write the k to be um, m times omega square, or the frequency of the oscillation of the harmonic oscillator. So um, you can write, uh, you can replace this in the uh, Schrodinger's equation and make a Schrodinger, Schrodinger's equation for um, harmonic oscillator um, by using this expression with where k is equal to uh, mass times omega square or the frequency square. So everything in the universe or, or almost all systems can can be can be reduced to um, 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 a harmonic oscillator if the vibrations of the system is very small. So here, just to show that you can reduce uh, the potential to be of this form, where this one is the spring's constant, and this one is the um, the uh, the stretch of or the the oscillation, where x sub o here is the minimum point, and x is where um, the oscillation is occurring. So this is the potential. If you want to get the wave function for the harmonic oscillator, you just have to replace the potential with this. Again, m omega square is k. If you want to use k, it's, that's fine. But um, in this case, uh, we change k to m omega square. So the Schrodinger's equation for the harmonic oscillator will now look like this. Will now look like this. This is now the time-independent Schrodinger equation for harmonic oscillator. So that's a negative h bar square over 2m, second derivative of psi with respect to x square plus 1 half m omega square x square uh, phi, I know uh, this is not psi, but this is phi because these are stationary states. Again, I told you last meeting that um, um, this can be solved in two different ways. You can use the um, method of power series expansion, or you can use the informal ladder operators. Um, 
The first one we'll discuss uh, the algebraic method. This one is vague, but this gives you also the correct um, energy states of the harmonic oscillator. But there are modifications in which you have to pay the price. For example, for the al algebraic method or the ladder operators, uh, we can um, we can factor this um, this expression, this one this into um, this one using this identity. So this identity can be uh, used to factor this out, and we have. Um, here, um, to factor this one, we can get uh, this expression for here, um, for this one. So that's uh, the one over square root of two m will just be one over uh, the one over two m will just be one over square root of two m if you factor this out. So h over i d over dx here and plus minus i m omega x that's here so the u this one is represented by the u and the, this one is represented by the the v so that you will have a an operator that looks like this now um this uh, A is just a notation for, for this um, expression. We call them ladder operators. Um, you have uh, A plus is for the racing operator and A minus would be for the uh, lowering operator. What they do is that um, if you apply these ladder operators, for for example, A plus, racing operator, uh, if you multiply that or you operate that, I sorry, if you operate that to a wave function, the wave function operated by that will give an energy uh, higher than the original wave function. Or if you apply A minus to a wave function whose energy is E, for example, if you apply A minus to the wave function, it will give you an energy lower than the original, but the increment are constant. Uh, let's, uh, uh, let's just go through the lecture and then we'll find out what is the increment or what is the uh, energy that's um, added to the original energy when you apply A plus or A minus. So now uh, this will now look like um, A minus uh, A plus because uh, A plus A minus is represented by this and if you multiply this, um, you, it will look like this. It will look like uh, this expression. So after factoring them, but these are operators. Remember, uh, this is only this is only true. This one is only true. Um, this one, um, sorry. This one is only true when you're doing ordinary numbers. But this one, you're uh, dealing with operators the derivative and the x here are operators so we could do we could use this identity uh, in order to factor this but we have to pay the price later we will know what's what's the price for for using that so since these are operators this can only work when a test function 
is uh, placed um, or, or when you have a test function that, that it has to act on. So now let's uh, look at this. A minus A plus of Fx. This is necessary. This function is necessary in order for the operators to act. You cannot just say a plus a minus because these are operators. These are operators. You have you have to have a function here. You have to put a function here and a function here in order for for that function to be uh, to be acted upon by the derivative or to be multiplied upon by x here. So you need a test function f x for example. So a minus A plus, A minus this one, A minus would just be, um, A minus would just be equal to, um, equal to this um, term times one over square root of two N. And this uh, A plus would just be equal to um, this, uh, expression times one over square root of two m times fx so now um you have to you can now distribute f of x here in the in the first and second terms so h over i d f over dx plus i omega x f so you you will have a, a the derivative of f with respect to x here and here you have a m is constant omega is also constant why because omega is just square root of k over m k is um the springs constant and m is the mass of the particle so these are constant so this this two x times f is a product of two functions one function is x and the other function is f so now you can uh, again distribute this, uh, this uh, to be distributed here, and then again distributed here. I have four terms all in all. So if you um, multiply this um, to here, that will become negative h bar square because i times i will be just negative one h bar square uh, second differential uh, second uh, derivative of f with respect to x and then if you um if you operate this here you will have um i will be cancelled you have h m omega times the derivative of, of xf. We now are getting the derivative of the product. And uh, for this term you have, for, for this one you will have, uh, i will be canceled, and then h m omega df, uh, uh, x is not, not part of the derivative anymore in this case. So df over dx, you only have that. And then, uh, for this one, you will have, um, if you multiply to this, that will just be plus m square omega square x square times f. So finally, you will get, um, so uh, in this case, you will use uh, this identity. So this is just equal to x times d df over dx plus f so that um, your expression finally will um, so this one will now be equal to this term, this expression so now canceling if you cancel f of x you cancel f of x here. 
Okay. So you cancel that. And um, we now have, so finally, we now have for this expression only, this is the expression for that without the F. Now, look. We factored, we factored it to be like this, such that um, you will have this expression. But we did not get this expression. We instead uh, got this expression. This is supposed to be the original expression, this one. Um, sorry. Uh, this is the original expression. But uh, there's a factor, it's a term here that's, um, that's uh, in addition to the original one here. There's a term, uh, H, M, Omega, or the term, if you, if you multiply it, uh, 1 over 2m here, that's um, uh, h bar omega over 2, or 1 half h bar omega. So there, that's an extra term. There's an extra term of 1 half h bar omega. Uh, the m, the m will cancel uh, here. The m will cancel here. So that's the price that you have to pay by doing an algebraic factorization to an operator. Uh, so here, we are not actually factoring an ordinary number, we're doing a, uh, but here we're doing a factoring of ordinary numbers and applying it to here, but uh, it doesn't give you the same result. It gives you, there is this term plus another term. So then, uh, so again, we have this. As the original one plus one half h bar omega here. Therefore, we can transfer this. Um, this is the price that we have to pay again. Uh, so we can transfer this to he, on this side. We can subtract and then get the expression get this expression this expression is equal to e5 this one so a minus a plus minus one half h bar omega times phi is equal to e5 which is this so that's that And uh, how about changing the order of a and of a plus and a minus? How about changing their order? So in this case, if you do the same thing here, if, if you do this process here, uh, you will get uh, this expression. So look at uh, these two. You have a minus a plus here and a plus a minus here. In this case, the different there is a difference of negative one half h bar omega, which is unlike here, which is positive. So the ordering of the ladder operator, the ordering of the ladder operators has something something uh, to do with the uh, uh, with the extra term. So it's not the same for for uh different orders so the sign is uh in in this case the sign is different here so if you subtract a minus a plus minus a plus a minus this is just equal to um h bar omega because that's uh one half h bar omega uh, minus negative h bar omega this is also called the commutation relation of a minus a plus 
the ladder operators. The commutation relation of A minus and A plus. So we can write um, also, so, uh, so we can write the Schrodinger equation in this form or in this form. They are just the same. So they are just the same. Only that uh, you have um, a negative sign here and a reversed order uh, of the lowering and raising operator. These are equal. So since they are equal, you can um, you can also write the Schrodinger equation uh, here. A plus uh, a minus a plus plus a plus a minus times psi uh, times phi x is also equal to 2e two, two times phi, uh, phi x. Or you can also write uh, in this form also. So that one. Now, how about uh, I told you earlier, if you applied um, a plus to psi, what happens? So now, how about I multiply, I mean, phi. Um, how about when I multiply phi with a plus, what happens? So I will now distribute this. I will distribute it here. And then I will also distribute that here. So that I will now have a plus, a minus, a plus, phi, and then one half h bar omega, omega, a plus. So I can take out, take out uh, a on this side. Remember that the ordering is very Im uh, important. It's very crucial. So, so if I take a on this side, you will be left with a minus a plus, a minus a plus here. That's left uh, for here. And then a plus, I can just take it out automatically because one half is just a constant, h bar is also just a constant, and omega is also a constant. So this one will have, um, so this one will have um, um, this um, uh, expression now. So what is this? Um, a minus A plus plus one half H bar omega. What is that? A minus A plus minus one half H bar omega. So uh, if I subtract one half H bar omega, I would have to add one half H bar omega so that the expression, this expression, will become will become this that is just the same uh, you just put uh, the phi inside so this one but what is this one this one is just e phi this one is this one is uh, e phi here it's e phi therefore i have uh, I now have um, a plus e phi plus h omega phi. And this is now e plus h bar omega a plus phi. So this one, this one applied to this one, which is this one. will give me an energy e plus h omega pi um, h bar omega sorry uh, e plus h bar omega look this is the original wave function the original wave function is phi and i applied a plus to phi this is now a different wave function i applied a racing operator to phi and this racing operator cost um, cost the energy to race also. 
So if you apply A plus to a wave function, that will increase the energy by h bar omega. So if you apply A plus square, then that would be E plus h bar omega plus h bar omega. So that's now 2 h bar omega. So, um, so that's uh, how it's increased. There is a constant increase. So if you apply 3, then that would be E plus plus 3 h bar omega. So there's an increment of h bar omega for, for the energy. Now, how about uh, applying a, a minus to phi? How about applying A minus to phi? So uh, if you do by the same argument, you will be able to find uh, an energy that's lower than the original, lower by h bar omega. So if you apply A minus to phi, um, this one, the energy would be lower. Uh, lower than um, E by H bar omega. So again, A plus A minus are called ladder operators. Um, these ladder operators, I allow the system to climb up and down in energy by a constant H omega. So the, ra the racing operator is called A plus and the lowering operator is A minus. The racing operator will raise the energy of the original wave function if you apply that to the wave function, it will increase its energy by h bar omega. The lowering operator, operator will decrease the energy of the original wave function by h bar omega. So here, if your original omega, uh, if your original wave function is has the energy E here, if you apply A plus so many times here, so for example, A plus, a plus of phi, then you will have an energy of E plus h bar omega, and then E plus 2 h bar omega for A plus, uh, for A squared, uh, for A plus square phi, and E plus 3 h bar omega for A plus cube phi. And then if you apply A minus, the energy will just decrease by uh, h bar omega. And then a further decrease if you apply more A minus. But what happens here if you apply continuously A minus? It will come to a point that the energy will become negative, and we don't allow that negative energy. Because um, the, the harmonic oscillator is, um, has positive energy and it's vibrating on the parabola, we cannot allow negative energy there. So if you apply A3, A, A minus uh, cube, A minus the fourth, it will come to a point that the energy will be, we have to stop that uh, energy from becoming negative. So um, there is only a maximum number of A minus that we can apply. There's only a maximum. Um, there's only a maximum uh, number of times that we can apply a minus going down. So what is that? So when will? Um, so uh, uh, phi, and then this uh, wave function will now be a minus phi and this function will not be a uh, minus square phi until you will um, reach this phi such that when you apply a minus such that when you apply a minus here it will be zero it will be zero here so this is now the lowest rung the lowest rung of the wave function. So the lowest rung, if you if you if you want to get the lowest rung, we will have to do this. So a minus 
of phi zero would be equal to zero because this is the lowest rung. So we'll have to find this lowest rung. So a minus is just equal to this one over square root of two m h bar over i uh, the derivative of of phi o dx minus i m omega x phi o. This is equal to zero. So you can uh, transform this equation and finally you will um, be able to get this expression. So m omega over h bar times x uh, phi zero. You can make this, uh, uh, you can divide phi sub o so that it will look like this and that m omega h bar the dx uh, you have to transfer on the other side so that it will look like this and then integrate both both sides of the equation the integral of uh, of this expression is uh, ln phi sub o and this one is just equal to h omega over 2 h bar x square plus some constant now this constant um, we can just set it to a sub o for phi sub o for phi sub one um that's just a one and so on so here um so you you have now found you have now found the the lowest rung So I hope uh, it didn't um, confuse you. So now um, the energy of the lowest rung, we will now have to find the energy here. The energy of the lowest rung, um, this is uh, the Schrodinger equation. You have to apply this to phi and this is supposed to be equal to e phi because this is the energy of the wave function phi sub o phi or phi sub zero so you will have um to distribute this this one di distributed to here and uh, distributed to here also but this one this factor this one is zero here so everything will be zero so that uh so this one is cancelled out because this one is zero so your eo if you cancel phi sub o your eo or the ground state energy the harmonic oscillator will just be one half h bar omega so this is now your um energy of the ground state of a quantum harmonic oscillator the ground state energy of a quantum harmonic oscillator so now if you apply a plus to the wave function the energy will just increase by h bar omega no so if you apply double plus the energy will just be increased by 2 h bar omega and if you apply a triple a plus the energy will just be increasing by 3 h bar omega which is um, if you apply a plus n times applying a plus n times will give you an energy equal to n plus one half h bar omega or n h bar omega plus one half h bar omega and this is um the wave function if you apply um a plus so if this is zero this is uh if this is zero a n would be a of zero a plus to the zero is just equal to one and times this so that will just look like that if that is zero so for a uh, phi one for phi one would just be 
phi 1x plus a1, a plus, so the 1 is just a plus, um, um, times this exponential of negative m omega over 2hx squared. So if this is n equals 3, then uh, a plus, a plus, a plus. There will be 3 a plus um, acting on this exponential. And the energy is E3 equals 3 plus 1 half h bar omega. So that's uh, just, just, that's just simple substitution. So anyway, you have to remember that um, you have to remember that uh, wait. A plus you have to remember that A plus is um, A plus is equal to 1 over square root of 2 m h bar over i d dx plus i m omega x. So that's just uh, you have to put that factor 3 times 4 um, for uh, phi 3. So you have to also apply that factor 5 times if your n is equal to 5. So now, um, phi 1x is just equal to i a1 omega over square root of 2m x e to the uh, this one because you have to multiply a plus a plus your a plus would just be equal to this expression. So if you e apply a plus two times, then you have to write this two times in between a and this exponential. So for a1, uh, for, for phi one x, it will just look like uh, this expression. So you can solve the uh, quantum harmonic oscillator by ladder operators, and you can also solve it by analytic method. Let's uh, look quickly on the analytic method. Let's look at that. So for the time independent Schrodinger equation for the harmonic oscillator, you have this. You have this um, uh, Schrodinger equation, the ties for harmonic oscillator. We change uh, dimensionless. Uh, we change. Um, we change the variable. We use c. Uh, c. C is um, c. Uh, c is x. This is the spelling of this is uh, x i c. So c is equal to m omega over h over h bar square root of that times x. We can change. Uh, we can transform this uh, equation into this. Uh, the derivative of c would just be m omega over h bar to the one half uh, dx. So that um, you can rewrite. So that this one would be rewritten into this. Um, expression where k the big k is 2e two e, two e over h bar square you can try to transform it in your notes right now uh, k is the energy in units of uh, one half h bar omega so now let's look at this um, let's look at this uh, differential equation analytically at very large c, large c meaning this is big, this also means that x is also big. At very large c, if you square a large number, that would be very large. That's com uh, This factor then completely dominates over the constant k. So this is now dominating. So you can approximately write you can approximately write this as this expression. 
So this expression is now the approximate uh, differential equation for C, for C very large. So what is the solution for this? Um, what is the approximate solution for this um, differential equation? So this is now the, the solution of this differential equation as you have uh, solved in, in your differential equation scores. So this is the solution. If you get the derivative twice, it will give you this. Okay, so here, so looking at this equation, what happens? Um, at negative infinity, what did I tell you about the wave function? The wave function at infinities, negative or positive, they should approach zero, the wave function. That's the requirement of a wave function. But in this case, if you, let's see, go to positive infinity or negative infinity, this one will be equal to um, what? This one will be equal to um, zero. I mean, um, if you let this go to infinity, this will um, go finite. Will this will go finite? But this one, if you let this go to infinity, this will become the whole thing will become infinity. So that's not a good wave function. That will not be normalizable. So in this case, you have to set b um, equal to 0. b is equal to 0. So um, you will now be left with um, your phi, c, would now be left with only this term. But you are not also sure with what a is in this case you are not also sure because this is just an approximate um solution for large uh, large c for large um large c this is the approximate solution so this one so this one is now um control z this one will be out of the question this is out of the question this term so you're only left, you're only left with this term here. And this one is just the solution if you have large C. So we can um, um, pick on the on the coefficient of this one in order that it will also um, be valid in uh c which are not large to smaller c for example so we can write um our phi c uh, into this but uh we have to look also at at this um, at this uh coefficient this is at large c but we have to uh look into this and we um, do some peel off uh, of the exponential part by setting the coefficient. We set this coefficient to be not a constant, but instead a function. We, we instead use a function instead of a constant so that it will also apply to uh, C that are not large because this is only this only applies for large c so we write this a instead of being a constant we can write this as a function h c so if we write this as that we can get the derivative of uh, phi with respect to c to be this one if you do the first derivative and then you do the second derivative, derivative, you will get this expression also. 
So, <clears throat> in going back to the time independent Schrodinger equation here. Um, going back to, to this, um, where is the time independent Schrodinger equation? Going back uh, to here, the transformed uh, Schrodinger equation. So you will have um, this one will be replaced by this expression, this one here. And then you will have uh, also um, uh, this one. Finally, so you just replace the second order derivative with this. This is also an equivalent um, um, uh, Schrodinger equation. This is the equivalent Schrodinger equation in terms of h, in terms of h here. But this one is in terms of phi, but we now express it like this. So uh, the, the Schrodinger equation uh, will now have h as the wave function uh, in this case. But uh, actually, h is a, is a function of c here, is a function of c. So by solving this, we can use the power series, power series uh, method in solving the, this differential equation. So um, we can write HC to be this one as a polynomial. So HC A0 plus A1C plus A2C, uh, A2C squared plus A3C cubed plus A4 C to the fourth, which has a general form of, of this one. It has a general form of that one. And then if you get the derivative of h with respect to c, that will just be summation from j equal to zero to infinity uh, a j times a j e to the uh, c to the j minus one. And if you get the the second order derivative, this will just be this one. Okay. The second order derivative will just be yeah. Uh, here you will have, if you get the second order derivative, this is just j times j minus 1. j times j minus 1, a j uh, uh, times c, j minus 2. But if you, if you set j minus 2 here to be j, then you have to put uh, j minus uh, minus one to be j plus one and j to be j plus two and uh, a to be or a j would be a j plus two if you start with j equal to zero so this is so the second derivative is equal to this um j minus one times j a j c to the j minus two but you can rewrite that into this where the j here becomes, uh, where the j minus 2 becomes, um, or where the j becomes uh, j plus 2. Because in this case, you have j minus 2 for the second derivative. The j minus 2 here becomes the j. So that the expression on, on this, the coefficient will now look like this. And the coefficient, a j would have j plus two. So, um, if you put this, if you put this, if you put this one, which is this one, to here, 
and putting and putting also this one to here you will now uh, be able to solve the uh, differential equation we have to find we're now looking for the value of h by the way h um, here is uh, this expression this expression is equal to h so we're now looking for it so if you replace that you will be able to get uh, this you will be able to get this expression and this is equal to zero this is equal to zero so now um so by if you have uh, already taken power series, I think you have uh, done it in your um, mathematical physics course. So this one, ordinarily, you can write this as um, this one. You just take off the summation and take off the uh, C here. But it's not that easy to take off because you have to multiply some um, some function, but automatically it will just give you, uh, if this is zero, it will just uh, automatically give you um, this expression, this one. But it's not easy to take off the summation and to cancel the, the C here. But uh, you just, uh, automatically equate this to zero so if you have uh, now this uh, equation so we will not show we will not show how 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 this is arrived but just uh, this coefficient because these are um orthonormal to other ej where j, uh, the j is different from from this j here these are all orthonormal um yeah anyway uh, just uh, in the previous lecture you can <clears throat> you have you have done that so anyway this expression is zero is zero so you can find aj plus two to be equal to to this you only have um aj plus two and then you have aj and aj here and uh, this one this aj you can write aj plus two in terms of aj using this equation so if you're given if you're given uh, a zero if j is equal to zero here you can get um a2 so from this a2 you can substitute a2 here you can get a4 and then once you get a4 you substitute a4 here you can get a6 and if you have a6 you can substitute a6 here and get a8 and so on but if you have j equals one here you can get a j plus uh, I mean, A plus uh, A3. If you get A3 here, substitute A3 here, you get A5 and so on. So therefore, you can write the function H of C in this form. You can write in this form uh, the even part and the odd part where the even part is uh, here and the odd part is this one a0 a2 a4 a1 a3 and a5 now again um uh we consider uh, approximately we we can if we consider j to be very large 
the J here to be very large, what happens? If the J is going to be large, this will dominate, dominate, dominate K. And then you have now uh, J square. The denominator would be, this will become J. If J is very large, this will become J. And this will also become J. And this will become 2J. So 2J over J square. For J large, the a j plus two will just be equal which just will just be approximately equal to two over j a j this one or so now if you set this equal to one so this is two over one uh, j a one you'll get a three and then if you get a three uh you substitute it here um and if you expand for a for a lot of j you get a lot of j you will actually get this um you will actually get this approximate solution for aj this one so the same thing for uh j equals zero so of course uh, j equals zero here here cannot be normalizable so you start with j equals 2 so 2 over 2 and then you get a4 so a4 here you substitute a4 here this will be 2 over 4 uh, and for a6 uh, you can substitute a6 here and then 2 over 6 and your approximate solution will look like this your approximate solution will look like this. And so, uh, for higher powers at large E, or at large C, I mean, you'll be able to uh, approximate your H C to be of this uh, form. So this is this the A J. Um, the AJ here will just be equal to this AJ, this one, this one times C, and uh. E J uh, C J, C to the J would also be just C to the J here. So if you change uh, variables, if you change this to two K, you'll just have K factorial here. So your H uh, polynomial as a function of C will be just um, equal to this this is an exponential the the exponential formula equal to exponential of c square this one this is um this one is um so if you look at this one at large C, this is infinite, right? At large C, this is infinite. And we don't want that because that is not normalizable. Right? So it, it's not normalizable at, at large X or large C. But... Um, I'll just highlight there, I'll, I'll highlight this one. Now, how about um, separating? How about separating H even and H odd? So anyway, uh, we don't want this uh, solution, but rather uh, we there must occur some highest J here, 
some highest J. There must occur some highest J here, such that everything here will be zero. What is that? So you let you set this as equal to zero. So J would just be equal to K minus one over two, if this is zero. So if, if that is zero, then um, we can, if this is zero at some J, then uh, for example, J is equal to N. So A N here will just be zero. And so if you substitute, uh, uh, if you if you substitute as a recurrence, you will get everything zero. So there must uh, there must uh, occur some highest j. We call it n, such that the recursion formula spits out n plus two equal to zero. Because uh, if it's equal to n, the coefficient if it's equal to n here. If it's equal to n here, everything will be zero. So that a n times zero will just be a n plus two. Uh, that's zero, everything. This will truncate either the series h even or either the series h odd. So only one of the even or one, only the even will survive or only the odd will survive. So if n, is like an number. If n is an odd number here, if n is um, uh, even here, so everything will be zero. So, okay. So if j is equal to n, then if j is equal to n, then we will have k. So since this is now equal to zero, k is equal to two n plus one. So your k will now be two n plus one. And k, as you could remember, two n plus one. This is k. This is now k. This is equal to two n plus one. So if this is equal to two n plus one, then it will give us an energy it will give an energy equal to this one. So this is just two N plus one over two, the whole thing. So N starts from zero, one, two, and, and so on. So we, we ha now have the same energy as we get from the ladder operators. So with uh, K equals two N plus one, aj plus 2 will be uh, this one, this expression. So if we set n equals um, 1 or n equals 0, then we will have, uh, then we'll have j is equal to 0. If n is equal to 0, then we'll have j is equal to 0. So everything will be 0. So um, if this is zero, j is equal to zero, uh, we will have um, a2 would be zero. So we're only left with h, h sub oc as a zero. If n is equal to one, if n is equal to one, then we will have uh, j is equal to one to make this zero so that h, we only have this. And that will give you uh, phi equal to that, and phi one, uh, phi zero equal to that, and phi one 
equal to this. For n equals 2, so when will this become 0? j equals 2. So uh, for j equals 2, um, you will have a4 equals to 0 here. So we will have only this um, polynomial. For h equals 3 and so on, uh, we can use the Hermite polynomials because these are these are actually just the Hermite polynomials. These are actually just the Hermite polynomials. These are just the Hermite polynomials, and we can write the the normalized stationary states for the harmonic oscillator to be this one in this form, where hn is equal to this one. These are the Hermite polynomials. We can, uh, if, you, if you plot this in the computer, this one, if you plot this in the computer, you will be, um, you, it will give you a, a, this, um, this uh, plot for phi equals zero. And then for uh, phi equals one, you will have this plot. And then this plot for um, phi equals two, and then phi equals three. And if you go further, you'll be able to get this. For example, phi 100, uh, the, the modulus of phi, 100, uh, phi x uh, sub 100 you'll be able to get this plot. And look at this. This is like a parabola. Uh, parabola. This now looking like the classical harmonic oscillator. This one, it doesn't look like the classical harmonic oscillator. But if you go higher, maybe uh, n equals 1,000, you will then get this. Um, this well, this parabola. So this was the 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 dash lines here are the the harmonic well or the harmonic oscillator well. So if you go one thousand, then you will get uh, a, a good uh, approximate parabola. So anyway, uh, learning about the the. The, um, the analytic method is a good one because um, this tells you that you you can um, follow the um, procedures mathematical procedure with um, um, in a, in a good foundation um, doing the differential equations. Um, doing some estimations in the differential equations. Um, but uh, however, it still gives you the same wave function and energy uh, as given by the ladder operators. So you can solve the harmonic oscillators by ladder operators, the raising and the lowering uh, operators. And you can also solve it by analytic method. Once you solve the, the harmonic oscillator by ladder operators, it's already enough. You can get the energy and you can get the wave function. But it's necessary also to do the analytic method because analytic method gives you the good found mathematical foundation in, in solving the harmonic oscillator. So um, if you want to uh, ask questions, you can post your questions in the in the uh, Google Classroom and uh, in the Molly Classroom. And by the way, um, for, for our class, um, I will schedule a Zoom um, meeting uh, in an interaction, interaction section and also, um, or, we can do Google Meet, the three, uh, the four of us, 
uh, I will just schedule it uh, later in order to uh, grade you uh, with uh, with your interactions and your questions and uh, how you really understood the lectures. So please review all the lectures. I will be scheduling a Zoom meeting in the future. Um, please interact with me in our Google Classroom or in our Molly Classroom. Thank you so much for listening. By the way, next meeting will be the continuation of this and we will be discussing about the free particle. We'll be looking for the wave function of the free particle. So we've done infinite square wheel and then we've done harmonic oscillator. Next time, next one would be free particle. Thank you so much. Uh, have a nice day ahead.